Belt Buckle Trainer, teaching you how to program for a client who wants jacked arms in less than 10 minutes. A beginner, let's go. Remember, focus on light reps in the beginning, strength and connected tissue, neuromuscular communication, two to three sets. Check out delayed onset muscle soreness to see how they're recovering. I'd much rather start easy and then progress by setting clear expectations. Don't be doing 20 sets day one, giving them rhabdomyolysis, killing your clients. They're so sore that they don't show up. Start with a nice little warm-up, 10 checkpoints of human movement, ankle, knee, hip, lumbar, thoracic, spine, cervical region, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and some breathing drills. Don't need to get too crazy, two, three minutes, then get into the first CCA. We're still going to be doing a full body workout, and a big mistake new trainers make is they're going to do a program that they put on themselves on a beginning client. Most of you bros have been doing some rich piano split where you're doing 20, 30 sets of arms for a single workout. It takes you two to three hours. That's not going to happen with a client. If they're coming in for a 25-minute session or an hour session, you're looking at doing circuits hitting the full body because you still want to optimize fat loss and strength throughout the full system. So the first CCA core movement pattern, when we push chest, triceps are going to be working as a synergist. When you pull back, Biceps are going to be working as the synergist. So start with multi-jointed exercises. You're going to burn more calories, and you're going to get a great hormonal cocktail. Get those T levels jacked up. They're going to be feeling good. So at the end, when you sit them down, you say, how was that workout? You wanted jacked arms? Aren't you feeling great? And they go, holy crap, I do. I want a 1,000 sessions from you because you're a great trainer. That's why you're going to take their goals and then give them a hell of a workout, and then you're going to pitch them your value and that's why your sales should be significantly higher than the average trainer because you're not a level zero trainer. You're a level one. You're showing up, becoming the best, how to become a successful personal trainer. I'm going to start out with bench press. We're going to do 10 to 15 repetitions. I thought that every man could do 135. Boy, did I learn that it's false. I thought every girl could do the bar, which is 45. So just ask your client how much you think you can bench. And if they don't know, gauge it based off of the movement screens that you did earlier by pushing and pulling and so forth. Maybe you start out with a 10 on each side, and they do it 10 times. It's super easy. Then we're going to do some chin-ups. If they have shoulder issues, if they're really overweight, you may need to regress it to an Aussie or a cable row. Three to five reps, focusing on the descent or the eccentric. That causes a lot of soreness. Great for the biceps. If you want giant biceps, look who do a lot of pull-ups. Gymnasts. They're absolutely freaking jacked. So you should be able to pull your body over a bar. If you can't, that's what we should be focusing on. Too many of you new trainers are having your clients isolate the whole entire workout. You're doing curls and extensions for the whole hour. You may do that, but you've been training for three or four years. For a beginner, you got to start with multi-jointed exercise. For the and accessory, the add in their main goal. What is your number one muscle you want to improve? If they say biceps and you put in a curl exercise. If they say triceps, then put in a tricep exercise. Just don't compromise the force production for the first circuit. So I wouldn't put triceps here because if I did, I'd be compromising the force for my bench press. Most cool. guys do curls unilaterally, right side and left side. So I'm going to have them do them bilaterally together. Twist at the top. The anatomy of the biceps are really important. They're going to flex the elbow. They're going to flex the humerus, but they're also going to supinate at the wrist. So doing a little twist at the top is going to help them get more activation. You're not going to get a peak. That's a big misconception. The peak depends on what mom and dad were doing when they made you. That's all genetics. It depends on where it's inserting past the elbow. The further away, the closer it is, is going to have an impact on the peak. But twisting is going to give you more activation. Now for the posterior muscle, the triceps brachii, they're going to extend at the elbow and also extend at the humerus. They don't have an impact on wrist position. It doesn't really matter. That's for another conversation. I've done videos on why supinated extensions are stupid. Three rounds each time increasing the load. Second circuit, we're going to do some dumbbell incline press, dumbbell high row. So if the angle is at 45, I'll just turn them around, and then we'll do some rows off of the bench, greater stretch. And then we'll do some lateral raises. Do that for three rounds. And then for the third circuit, we're going to do a landmine press. We'll do some goblets to hit the lower body and the legs and some tricep extensions. So far, these three circuits, we've pushed, we've pulled, we've worked the shoulders, we've isolated the shoulders, isolated the biceps, isolated the triceps, do a lower body pattern, hinge, squat, unilateral, choose one of those patterns 
in one exercise. When you start incorporating legs with upper body, your client's going to get toast. Remember, he wants bigger arms. So if you do legs here, legs here, or throw in cardio, maybe you think he needs to lose five pounds, you absolutely smoke him so he can't get through the full workout. What is your client's goals? And so you need to focus on that. Most guys aren't used to circuits. So rest at the end for a good two minutes. Let them know rest is your friend because if you go bench, chin-ups, curls, right back in the bench, let's say he did 65 for 10 reps, but now he comes around the second round and he's exhausted. He only can get it for five. Why? Why did you compromise that load, that tension optimization, just so you can burn a few more calories? The goal is to add size. Rest is super, super important. At the end is when you can throw in a burnout. Five, 10 minutes, get your clients to sweat, chase the burn. That's the stuff that they really like. But if you do that in the beginning, they're not going to show up anymore and your retention is going to be really low. So at the end, if you have time, you could go do some more bench press. I really like to do it because it challenges what everyone else does out there. You do bench press and you can never go back to it again. Why? If you like bench press, we're going to fucking bench. If you want to work on chin-ups, we're going to work on more chin-ups. So just have them bring their hand grip a little closer, emphasize more of the triceps so you can go close grip bench into a curl, into an extension. Notice how when we do our programming for the accessory, I'll put curl and extension because you need to come up with a variation that's unique and fun for your client. So you need to come up with a variation that's different every time your client comes in. One exercise. Great trainers say your client's name at least four times during the workout. They show them a new exercise. They get involved with trainer engagement, and you ask great questions to learn something about them. So curls, you're just going to focus on bilateral, doing them together with a little bit of a twist. That could be new to them. Here, when the next time you do curls, maybe you do a hammer curl. Maybe you do a preacher curl. You do a strict curl on the wall, and you don't allow for any rocking. Maybe you do a rope curl. Have you maybe ever done 28s before? What? I've done 21s? Oh, my gosh. You're going to get absolutely jacked. Let me show you. Seven down here. Seven at the top oscillate seven in the middle, and then do seven more. And, and if you, you really want to get crazy, flip around your grip and end off on seven more for 35. Holy shit, I just blew your mind. I one time had a client go, <laughs> mind blown, Chris. Because you're reading magazines that these are dudes that are on tea, a crazy stack or a cocktail, whatever it is. They can do whatever they want in the gym, and they're going to get massive. Have fun with a couple of the accessories isolating it to keep them entertained because your clients think novelty is what's going to get them jacked. But in actuality, it's going to be the chin-ups and going heavier and the bench press. Two to three sets per circuit for a beginner. After a month, you can start increasing the VFI, volume, frequency, and intensity. Get down to six to eight reps after month one. You could be doing more sets. Check in with your client the next day to see how they're feeling. You don't want them to be so sore they have to cancel that next session. So down here, if it's already been an hour, you don't need to do this burnout. If they're completely exhausted and wiped, you could stretch. One workout will not change the physique or get you massive freaking arms. It's showing up regularly. Trainer, make you, sure to read my book and check out our seminar tour that we're doing right now all over the states at Lifetime at our partnership. We're going to be in Texas. We're going to be in the Northeast. We're going to be in the Northwest. We're going to be in Florida. Midwest, all over the place. If you want to learn how to become a successful personal trainer, we have a 14-day free trial. It's all about showing up. To show up in a CPT is recognized nationally, internationally. And remember, big biceps is better than smaller ones. And keep showing up.